Hey, hey, hey! It's the first ever real estate marathon. I'm your host, Jazz Takar. I hope you guys are enjoying what's happening on this marathon. I have Jeff Warren coming on. As I mentioned, we can make a lot of money, we can create a lot of wealth, but if we don't figure out how to keep it, keep it and keep majority of it, keep most of it, what good is it for us? And that's why I brought my boy on, Jeff Warren. Mr. Accountant, yes. how you doing good, today? Good, man, how you doing? Good, good, good. Look, you heard me do the intro, Jeff. We need to find out what are some tax advantages for real estate investors. So let's get into it. I mean, there's a lot of questions I have for you as well, but I kind of want to start off high level. Like, what are some tax strategies that investors can take advantage of? Okay, well, let's talk about a rental property and what you're going to be looking at here. You've got rental properties that you own personally. So if you're owning that personally in your own name, that's going to fall into your personal tax return, right? So that's your T1 return. That gets divided into the percentage ownership. So let's say we're looking at a husband-wife scenario owning a T1 or a, pers- uh, sorry, a rental property. Okay. Falls into that tax return according to that. I always preach simplicity when you're looking at a rental property. Okay. Right? I love so, that because you're going to bring it down for our investors right now in terms of how can we make this simple. Totally. Because some yeah. things with accounting are like... Well, not yeah, no, no, exactly. They should I be mean, because it's math. One plus one equals kind of two, but it, it doesn't always equal does it, two. Does it equal two? Well, see, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, so exactly. <laughs> yeah. so, so, you know, you know, simplicity, when I say, like, let's segregate your expenses from your personal finances, okay. right? So have that dedicated credit card that's going to be for your rental property alone. Oh, I like that. Have that automated bank account where your expenses are coming out, personal uh, property taxes. So hang on one sec, yeah. Jeff. I want to just slow it down. Okay, yeah. and I appreciate it because you know this, you do this a lot, but I want to slow it down even for myself because sure. I'm going to learn a lot as well. I'm investing into a property, 123 Main Street. Yep. So should 123 Main Street have its own account? Absolutely. Okay, go, continue. Absolutely. So 123 Main Street's got its own bank account. Make it nice and simple. Like making it nice and automated. So get that property tax coming out of the account directly, right? Get the utility payments. If the, if the tenant's covering them, great, they pay them. If you're paying them, get them out that way on their own, right? Ultimately, what we do is we look at the net number and that's what comes out on, onto your personal tax return that right. gets taxed at your marginal rate. That might be advantageous if, let's say, wife is in a lower bracket or husband's in a lower bracket, but ultimately that's where it goes, and there's not a lot of structure around that. you got to look at things of, you know, how do you depreciate that property, right? Because there is CCA available to you, but there could be adverse tax What's impacts. CCA? Right. Uh, capital cost amortization, so okay. that's where you depreciate the property itself. Right. And, uh, and you get to depreciate the building, right? Or, or any subsequent investment. Let's say you put a new roof on that building, then you're looking at, you can take the, the depreciation on that, right? Nice. But there's bad impacts that can happen with that depreciation as well. So you get the short-term gain, but potentially a long-term consequence, which is why you want to be talking to a professional and make sure that you are sort of structuring your rental property properly. And to that point, at any time, send us an email, info at reccanada.com. We'll make sure we get you in touch with Jeff and his team and, and make sure that you're set up properly. You continue because I also want to talk about how to get set up properly as well. Go. That's a good plug there, Jess. Thanks, man. So oh, anyway, sure. so okay, so that, that's the personal side for a rental property, right? Then we flip it and we can look at corporately held property, right? And, uh, and corporations, you know, there's pros and cons to a corporation, right? So let's step back from accounting. You know, one is with a, a corporation, you're automatically segregating your assets, right? right. So, uh, you know, you set up number company 1234 Ontario Inc. It is holding 123 Main Street as the property within it. Well, how is that taxed, right? Ultimately, uh, there's, there's tests that take place, but 123 Main Street's probably not going to be considered active business, okay? Right. It's going to be considered a, a passive form of income, so that means that you're going to get taxed around 48% within the corporation. Uh, once you dividend the income out, then it goes down to 22%, but it's, it's a way that you're going to hold it, but you're not getting that beautiful 15.5% that you're looking at with an active business. So right? how does that work? So, so, so within a real estate investment, can I get the 15.2? Can I get that? Or? 15.5, you can if you have five employees working within that company. On and who's considered basis. an employee? Uh, it's got to be someone that's going to be working at the fair market value of that thing. So got if you're it. looking at a property manager or if you are looking at someone that's looking at vetting tenants or whatnot, ultimately that's not something we're seeing a lot of our So it our can't be my investors. two kids, wife, and my... Uh, no, no, okay, I'm okay, like, okay, yeah, okay. I know, I I'm just making, sure, right? just making sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But, but ultimately, so, so there's, there's... When we're looking at corporately held properties, you know, 
if you're in that model where you're a serious investor and you've got all these employees and you've got multiple buildings and you've got something that's going to sustain that, right. it's a really great piece. Right. right. Um, but if not, then then you're just looking at sort of a passman holding. Um, you know, and, but but what you do get is that benefit of segregated assets, right? You know, you don't ever have to worry if someone slips on a porch that they're going to be coming after your family home down the road or any of the assets that you've acquired personally. In terms of uh, um, setting it up under a corporation, are you saying that the real only benefit is if somebody slips and falls? Like other than if you don't have the five employees because you're not going to be able to really take advantage of that 15.5%. Yeah, I mean, it, it also segregates. Okay, right. Think of your personal tax return, right? Okay. I, I don't like a very busy, ugly, complicated personal tax return. Okay. It gives, it gives more... Um, more things for, you know, the, the government to yeah. really be looking at, you know, if you've got five rental properties within your personal tax return, there's a lot happening in that T1, right? Um, by moving it into a corporate structure, right? Well, all of a sudden now you're moving it out and, and see you get a T4 or you get a dividend from that corporation. That's all that flows into your personal tax return. So there is a, there's no sort of set one to sort of Set all the set all right. Every situation is right? obviously a little different. That's why I want people to email us so we put them in touch with you because this is definitely not what we do here at REC Canada. We get you in touch with the right people, and that's why I want to make sure I do that. But continue. Well, 100%. I mean, for example, what is your marginal tax rate? Are, are you someone that's earning $500,000 a year? At which point, any net rental income that you're going to have, right? You've got that simple structure, rent comes into your separate account, you record your expenses. If you're in a high marginal rate, all of a sudden you're going to pay a lot of tax on that net rental income, right? Well, then maybe the corporate structure is for you. You can move it in, you can defer it, and, and you kind of simplify what is going to be a, a bigger tax return. So it, it's, you know, what we do is we look at the overall circumstances that a potential investor is looking at, okay. and then we dovetail the solution to what, what best serves them. What, right? what best yeah. serves them. Now, you're an investor yourself, and that's why I really wanted to partner up. You're actually uh, uh, the accountant of, uh, of our director of sales and marketing, Laura Stewart, and her husband. And so, I mean, the introduction there, obviously, Obviously working within our family and that's just this is just jazz going on a slight little tangent if you know somebody who's watching if you're watching or listening right now and you know a great electrician or a great plumber please let us know and we're gonna be talking about that in detail in our next uh, segment with mr. Tyler Walburn he's the director of our REC concierge real estate concierge services and uh, Jeff is part of that concierge service where Tyler will put you in touch with Jeff and his team you being an investor in real estate, what are some other things that have come up from an accounting perspective? So, I mean, so I just had a tenant moving in this morning, for okay. example, and yeah. we've been sort of dealing with, uh, with sort of that overall transition, 15th of the month coming in and all of that. I mean, let's say we're looking at, I've been personally looking at one of the first properties we purchased, we purchased individually ourselves, okay. Okay. Um, and it didn't go into a corporate structure, okay. right? And, and ultimately, when we started looking at Okay, how do we transition? You know, when you start doing your housekeeping and you're right. saying, okay, you know, maybe we're going to start shifting this property into it. Um, you know, we all of a sudden got hit with the consequences of land transfer tax. Now, there, there's obviously gains Welcome on that Welcome to property. Ontario. Oh, know, Welcome right? to Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. We know right? those taxes. And so just moving that personally held property into a corporate structure will trigger. You know, you're saying, well, I, I own it personally. I, I own the corporation. So isn't that not just going to be a transfer? Well, one, there's accrued gains that you're going to have to deal with. We've got some tax tricks to work with that. Okay. But even doing a transfer from yourself personally into a corporation you have to be aware of that land transfer tax. And that's where you're saying, okay, you know, I've got, I've got a, you know, an overall plan here. How can I roll that in and make it work? What is the consequence? And then what's the benefit that I'm going to see out of that, right? right. And, and ultimately, is that going to be a worthwhile decision? And that's something we do with clients all the time. We say, it. okay, this is the circumstances we're in now. This is a potential structure we're looking at. What's the benefits? What's the consequences? How are we going to get ourselves there? And, uh, and, that's, and that's kind of the solutions we have. It's never one size fits all, Yeah. but there is a solution for you, that's for sure. I love what you said. It's probably the, I think the best thing that I heard all day today. Yeah, I'm gonna, it, yeah Jeff, it was tax tricks. It was the word tax tricks that got me, whoa, okay. The, anyways, um, so no. now I actually have some personal questions as well, okay? okay. Um, let's just say that this, the real estate marathon, okay, today was being, it was, we were charging people uh, $49 or $99, whatever the number is. Yeah. Can an investor write that off? Like if you're, 
<laughs> I know not one, yeah, one size yeah. fits all, but I'm just yeah, trying to, yeah. like, because I have a couple of these questions that come to me all the time from my clients. Yeah, for sure. So you've got to be looking at write-offs related to the business should be tied into, does it help you earn that rental income? Right? Okay. And is it associated with it? So it could be uh, a form of professional development. You're right. as a landlord. Yes. Um, and you're looking at it as um, this really is an expense that is related to my operations of my rental property. Yes. If that's the case, then go for it. You okay. can try and write that off. Right. No okay. And now, so I own a home um, and I'm getting a line of credit and that line of credit, I'm going to be purchasing a pre-construction condo. Can I write off the interest on that line of credit? Yeah. So you want that's to, a definite one. You and, want it and you want to segregate that. You okay. Know that the important thing is maintaining really clear records, right? So when I talk simplicity, you've got that segregated bank yep. account. You've got that dedicated credit card you really want to make sure that you're maintaining extremely clear records. If you're pulling a line of credit for investment purposes, right. all right, look at what your existing mortgage was, look at what that line of credit was, keep it segregated so that you know that if you invested that 400K to put into that down payment for whatever property it is, right. that what the interest portion of that is a deductible expense against that, uh, that, that rental property. That rental have, property. But trace it and keep your records. And you want to hold on to those records for seven years so that the CRA ever does come and ask, you're, you're ready to speak to it and like, no, this is where we go. This is the calculation. Now, is there software and apps now that you know of? Maybe just some quick little of, tips and like just apps. to give some uh, uh, value without you emailing info at recanda.com. I don't know why you wouldn't email info at recanda.com. I've only said it 113 times today and I want to get you in touch with the experts. That's why I keep on saying it, guys, because I'm not the expert when it comes to accounting. I'm not the expert when it comes to RSP investing. I'm not the legal expert. We are going to have a couple of lawyers coming up one talking about all things assignment and then we have the lawyer that handles everything at the landlord tenant board and the new bill 184 make sure you stick around the marathon continues now jeff back to you my man how do we how do we like what are some other tips for investors maybe from a personal perspective because you are an investor when was that first investment property you got and how did you or your partner get over that fear okay so uh, it was Deadly scary. Okay. The first, the first <laughs> I, I, lived, I lived in a really small apartment. Okay. My wife, you know, when everyone's looking to buy a uh, a first family home, uh, my wife and I are like, no, we're we're actually going to buy a triplex, and okay. we're we're going to deal with it this way. And like it, it was it was a gong show. And, and what it forced me to do was start to develop things like, I mean, I'm, I'm a big user of Excel. It's an accountant's kind of core tool, right? right. Um, so I developed a series of templates that allow me to sort of look at how I pull in my expenses. You know, if you use that dedicated credit card, it's really easy to download your statements. Yeah. Uh, so I do that from a business perspective. Yeah. I use this card for this. I, I try my best. Sometimes I slip up. Yeah. But, so I, I'm glad that you use that strategy. Continue. But for sure. And then, but in addition, okay, the, you know, tools have gotten substantially better in terms of like, you know, if you want to go the QuickBooks online, the zero yeah. route, you can set what that can up. What can I use? I don't have a computer. Yeah. A lot of my insiders know my team. No, I don't own a computer. I don't touch a computer. Yeah. I do yeah. everything from this bad boy right here. Okay. What apps? Is there one or two apps? Uh, like, so does QuickBooks have an app or something? It sure does. Okay, good. Uh, and then, then I also use Receipt Bank a lot. So okay. now, whenever a contractor comes and they're doing something, they give me a receipt, I take a picture of it. Perfect. Automatically upload it to the cloud. When I get to the end of the year, it's a simple consolidation. That's not for everyone. I've got lots of clients that are very into their paper. They're yes. not holding on to the paper. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fine. Set up, a, set up a dedicated folder where you slot right. receipts, right? I say at the end of the week, uh, you know, grab a glass of wine, a beer, whatever you're doing and spend half an hour slotting receipts. Stay on top of it. One of the most, the, the worst things you can do is wait till 12 months from the end of the year and then you're like, oh God, I got to talk to my yeah, accountant, yeah. Oh, right? Yeah. And you that's get happened. that shoebox of receipts. I've done it. God, that's problematic, done, right? So, yeah. so, you know, just stay on top of it. Whether you're using a dedicated software, you're super digital, you're taking pictures, you're putting it up to the cloud, or whether you are, are just keeping your receipts and slotting them away, if you stay on, on top of it, you're organized and you're tracing through all of these various expenses and you're talking to someone that's going to help you make sure that you're staying on top of the right details, Right. trust me. Rental properties are, are a dream. So you were scared the first time, though. I was terrified. So what got you? Well, over? I got four now, though. I so know. It's, That's it what I'm push. saying. So, it was a push. so you know, the, one of the uh, themes of this marathon, one of the themes of, of all the content that I produce is everyone was scared until they did it. They were scared to buy a home. They were scared to invest into a home. They were scared to start a business. But once you did it, they were scared to do a virtual marathon. But until you did it, you're... Now you've got that confidence. You put in those reps, those muscles get stronger. You're at number four. Take me back to number one when you were scared and how did you get over it? Well, you know what? So what we did was 
We put in a lot of work. Listen, I, I had to change toilets. I, I, I was like, uh, so you deal with the tenants and the toilets, uh, kind of thing. I was we, we try not to. We yeah. try to help our guys not fair, do that. Fair, but okay, fair, go. Fair. That's yeah, good. That's I was, good. I was, I was but a lot of people do, man. I was Google yeah. handyman. Listen, I know how to paint and cut a beautiful <laughs> corner now. Okay, and, and these are the things. But but you know, it, it just became uh, a confident. Like you will see the benefit of an investment like that, and and it becomes uh, it becomes addictive. Right? right, because it's all the, the best scene, drug in the world, you know, and you you just feel uh, like even when you're not working, someone's working for you, someone's paying that mortgage down for you, and uh, and so it, it just became something that I became confident right. in, as as we saw, and, and I mean it became personal growth. Um, you you, you learn to read people, you learn yeah. to uh, understand who's going to be a good tenant for you, and you know, knock on wood, but I've never really had any real issues, Major and, and it's been and it's been just a solid piece that uh, that I take a ton of pride in. And, and you're so, passively creating that wealth over time. Exactly. Now, you've been doing this for a decade. I know it looks like, you know, you probably started when he was one, when you were doing this stuff, but it's not going to be started. You've been doing this for a decade, so you bring yeah. a wealth of experience. I'm so happy to have you part of our service providers. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be talking about that with Tyler, how those recommendations happen and how we vet people and how we have to actually vet out Jeff's team. Jeff, what areas do you service? Like, is this a provincial thing, a city thing? Like, how does that look like? Like, if somebody, I have people in Vancouver, I have people in, in Quebec. I saw a message come in. I think it was Bobby Pume. I think someone said Quebec, right, Bobby? I yes, think sir. I, yeah. And so, I, like, what areas do you service? So, so because yeah. there's a lot of people watching right across the world, mostly focused in Canada. Um, um, what areas do you service? Yeah, so I service the Canadian market through and through. East okay. Coast to West Coast. Okay. Right? And, uh, and obviously, you know, we've got a large subset of our clients that are in Toronto, West End of the city. One of the things I've noticed with, with the whole COVID situation is, God, we are extremely efficient when we don't have clients walking in the <laughs> so office. True. All the time, it's true. Right? It's true. Uh, you know, we've <laughs> developed templates, intake forms, ways that you know you don't even have to step in my office. We can set up a Zoom call. We can hop on a phone call. And listen, I love dispensing advice and just yeah. giving sort of those practical love solutions. It. Lead with education. And, well, Continue. I guess so. I yeah. guess so. Yeah. And so, uh, so you know, we service that. Obviously, I've got a real. Um, investment and focus on real estate. That's something that I've been working with clients for a number of years. Um, as a small practice, I do a lot of personal tax returns as, as well as a lot of corporate work. And uh, and so, you know, we, we, we do have a pretty broad base. Um, so it's personal, corporate, and real like real estate, all of it kind of. Uh, well, it, you know, and I do a lot of estate and trust work as well. So okay, after, you, after you've died, so, you know, so, and that's a real consideration yeah. too, right? Because you might have great parents that have invested in properties. What's going to happen with that property when it goes down a generation? What's the taxable consequences with that? You know, uh, you know, and, and the, the corporate structure falls into probate planning as well with your wills. So, um, so there's a, I've got a real focus on that market as well. And it's something that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm extremely proud well, of I doing. I, I'm yeah. glad that you talked about like, you know, parents, real estate going down to, oh, man, to the kids. Because yeah. we've been speaking about generational wealth, right? Absolutely. And, and like this marathon would not have happened if I didn't have an accountant. And I'm not just saying that. Reason being because, damn, you can make a lot of money, you can create a lot of wealth, but if you're not keeping it, what, yeah. is, what good is it? Yeah. Right? Okay. And, and, and I'm never, ever telling people that, like try to cheat the system. We all got to pay ours. We got to pay for the services that we have. But if there's a way to minimizing it, or what I'm really finding out over experience now, doing this for 15 years, you're not getting away from the CRA and getting sure away not. from paying taxes. You're just going to be able to defer them. You, for sure. I mean, you know, and, and pay your part. That's, that's exactly as we should. In the country, that's, that's what we should do. Well, but at the same time, listen, let's keep as much of it in your pocket as possible. And that, that's always my objective. That's, that's what I've been preaching. Is since there another on. tip that you might have as, as you uh, uh, for our marathoners? Um, to keep a little bit more money in our pocket. It doesn't necessarily need to come from only an invest, like to an investor. It yeah. could just be from a personal perspective, but obviously accounting as whole. What's that one tip we might be able to leave our marathoners with today? And it might just be like, organize your stuff, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, you, you kind of took the words out of my mouth, yeah. but it, it really does fall down to being organized, right? Because, um, you know, when, when someone comes to me with just a shoebox of receipts, yeah. I'm inherently not going to push the taxes necessarily as hard, right? Because, Interesting. Uh, because, I like because it, yeah. you, you, they're not going to be in a position to defend themselves. And the last right. thing I want to do is try and do something that, that's, you know, like, your write-offs is very distinct. What yes. is a good write-off? What's yes. not a good write-off? Yes. Right. Um, but if you are good and organized, you are going to be way ahead of the game. Let well, me tell even you. if you just learned 
get your shit organized, your taxes and your receipts and all that kind of stuff. That in and of itself is the tip that my boy Jeff here is leaving you with. Again, email us right now at info at recanada.com if you just want to get some education on how to get set up and or if you need actual personal, personal advice right now. Jeff is your man. Get in touch with us and we'll get you in touch with Jeff. Thank you so much for yes. being part of history. Thanks, I, appreciate I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming here and doing it live. I knew we might have done it through Zoom, but I told you what we're doing. You're like, I'm there and I appreciate I'm it. I'm really happy to be here. This, I'm was, sure. this was a blast. Yeah, and I awesome. was terrified. Like our, now, know, I feel good. now I feel good. I know, and now you <laughs> want to go for another 20, 30 <laughs> yeah, minutes. I know how it is. I do a great job. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. 